more to your rent. Everything in my bathroom costs more to your rent. And see, this is my closet. Everything in here would be designer. Gucci, Louis, Versace. Little Tay was nothing more than a footnote of internet history until it was announced last week that she had passed away. And then it was announced that she was still alive, which made many people ask what happened. Well, today I'll get to the bottom of this mystery. Claire Eileen Key Hope was born on July 29, 2007, to a Chinese mother and Canadian father in the city of Vancouver. Her parents were never married and actually separated when she was just two years of age. In the beginning, Claire was really no different than any other young kid. She enrolled in ballet classes at the age of four, with her skills carrying her all the way through several Royal Academy competitions. In addition to playing the piano, skating, swimming, singing, and studying Chinese, it's safe to say Claire Hope was exercising a multitude of talents from an extremely young age. Being a straight-A student at her elementary school, her mother would go on to describe the girl as a mild-mannered, well-behaved kid. With so much potential, there would be no telling just how far her abundant capabilities would take her. Claire hit the internet with a bang around late 2017. Originally posting to Instagram under the pseudonym Little Gucci Taylor, she specialized in playing up a deliberately shocking character. According to her in these videos, Tay was a nine-year-old Harvard dropout who made so much money moving bricks that she was able to afford fancy cars, mansions, designer brands, and so on. It's important to understand that, during this era, content based around creators flexing how much money they earned and how many expensive purchases they made was all the rage, and Claire was simply tapping into that market. But what set Tay apart from the rest was clear to see. She was nine years old. It was only a matter of time before she caught the attention of the internet, plunging directly into controversy and thriving off whatever attention she could, whether positive or negative. Around the same time, the mega popular YouTuber Ricegum was on the hunt for the next viral sensation to showcase to his audience. And given little Gucci Taylor's bizarre rise to fame, she was the perfect candidate for a video that would generate well over 7 million views. Essentially, in the fiction within Ricegum's channel, she played the part of his imaginary sister's bully. Basically, there's this little girl and she's been picking and bullying on my little sister. She even made a full video just threatening my sister, man. This was the first video to genuinely put Tay on the map. And whoever was truly behind the little Gucci Taylor persona at the time wasn't about to let this opportunity slip. The young girl immediately responded with a scripted reaction to rice gum. Shut the fuck up. Up. I'm nine years old, you look like 21 or some shit, and I'm a smack your auntie. Bitch, I'm partially black. Y'all, like, you don't even know anything about me, so why are you just making assumptions? So now you know you can just shut the fuck up. Thanks. But the spectacle was there, and thus the views and money began to roll in. Ricegum made more videos responding and reacting to the internet's youngest flexor, and both of their fan bases were eating it up. Tay was making a name for herself, and many were finding it hard to look away. Little Tay Money Way continued to grip YouTube throughout the first quarter of 2018. Creators like SS Sniper Wolf, Danny Gonzalez, The Fine Bros, and The Right Opinion, to name a few, were well aboard the Little Tay train at that point. With her flippant, inappropriate attitude contrasted against the obvious reality of her being a child, many found a great deal of entertainment value as either sincere fans or ironic gawkers. She even found herself rubbing elbows with massive names in the world of hip-hop like Takashi 6 9 Chief Keef, and Lil Pump. Little Tay's career was skyrocketing to impressive heights just a few months after making her first appearance, with countless managers and talent scouts hitting her up for potential partnerships. On the surface, her character may have seemed one-dimensional to many viewers, focused on flexing her riches and making fun of popular creators. But behind the scenes, her team was connecting with Goliaths in the entertainment world. After turning down Howard Stern and landing an interview with Jake Paul, Tay was given her own segment on Good Morning America, the most viewed morning show in the US. This was all thanks to a man named Diomi Cordero, a young manager known for his work with MTV, Republic Records, and Beyonce. 
After getting in touch with Claire's family, he began working for them with no contract, just to prove he was trustworthy. The goal from the beginning, as stated by writer Lauren Levy, was to build a brand of meme influencers. Basically, Cordero had a vision, which relied on making Lil Tay more marketable for mainstream audiences. Though according to him, attempting to clean up the child star's act would prove to be a challenge, and ultimately an impossible feat thanks to the input from her half-brother. Jason Tien was no stranger to the internet by the time Little Tay burst onto the scene. In fact, he had cultivated his own niche on YouTube under the name Ricey, where he tried his hand at making his own diss tracks. Unlike Little Tay, the 16-year-old couldn't rely on a gimmick to support his career, leading some to accuse the teen of living out his desired life through his half-sister. Additionally, the public became increasingly wary of her family's true intentions as more evidence surfaced of Tay being coached by her brother off-screen. Although the question of where her mother was may be on everyone's mind after seeing the vulgarity of her content, the answer struck many as incredibly tragic. She was always there. Rumors of Claire's mother, Angela Tian, being fired from her real estate job began to circulate shortly after her boss spoke out against the use of company vehicles in Little Tay's viral videos. In fact, the car shown in this upload, viewed over 13 million times, belonged to a managing partner at Angela's real estate firm which explained where she received all the luxury goods to flex in the uploads. According to this manager, he was only under the impression they would be taking a picture of it, not using it as a prop for a video pretending it was theirs. Although her boss had reportedly felt taken advantage of after finding out Angela had been using him as a front for her daughter's career, he didn't fire her like many had reported at the time. She was technically resigning, and many deduced this was because of just how much money her daughter was generating, even if all her initial claims of wealth were entirely fictional. But the lies didn't matter so much anymore, as most audiences saw through them anyway. Tay had finally reached the lifestyle she had always pretended to flaunt online, or at least something close to it. Angela and her two kids were able to exchange their suburban lifestyle in Canada for a more fast-paced life of stardom in LA. Moving in with Josiah Jenkins, a man responsible for jumpstarting the career of numerous influencers. As stated by Jesse Miller of Mediated Reality, Little Tay's videos involved a parent with a cell phone making choices about how her kid was noticed on the internet, and many began expressing concern for this child's well-being. And after a turbulent few months in which Little Tay appeared on platforms viewed by millions of people the world over, she suddenly vanished. Her account was scrubbed entirely by June 2018 with no prior announcement or explanation anywhere. Just like that, the eccentric character of Little Tay was gone. With one final cryptic story post reading, Help Me, the door was wide open for plenty of speculation. In October 2018, only a few months after the mysterious disappearance, Little Tay's Instagram posted once again. This time, whoever was operating the page seemed to have the goal of creating as much chaos as possible, changing the bio to hashtag free little Tay and hashtag make the internet great again, with the most notable posts being extremely serious allegations against Claire's own father, Christopher Hope. The writer stated that Tay was being abused by her father, even making the claim that Chris would have relations with women in the same bed as his daughter, and was nude in front of Tay quite often. In addition, they alleged that, although he had been out of her life for years, he was ordering her to come back to live with him and his new wife in Vancouver via court order. The posts even went so far as to blame Chris for Tay's hiatus, claiming he was afraid she would expose the truth to the world. In the words of Tay herself, He was threatening to have my mom arrested if we didn't go back. I didn't see him for multiple years. He never saw me for so long. It's obvious he just came back because he wants money. Although it was established Jason had been running her page in the past, there was no real way of verifying who was behind this supposed hack, other than it allegedly being someone who previously worked for Tay. A document released by Chris Hope stated the account was taken over by her brother Jason Tian, also a minor. 
he has either personally or encouraged others or negligently allowed the accounts to be used by third parties to conduct criminal extortion and harassment as well as the torts of defamation and libel. Despite the media frenzy that ensued back then, there was nothing but radio silence for another few years. Naturally, this generated concern amongst spectators. Concerns that wouldn't be addressed again until April 2021. Save Little Tay from a Life of Abuse are the ominous first words that preceded a GoFundMe for Claire's purported legal battle against her father. This, along with photos of a younger Tay being bruised up, were posted to her Instagram account after years of inactivity, once again making Chris out to be an abuser. According to one post, he had allegedly taken all of her money and still owed up to 400 grand in child support. In addition to various videos of Claire crying over staying with her dad and images of Chris going out with some woman, the GoFundMe went into even more explicit detail, as the organizer Jason outlined a pattern of Chris's alleged negligence. He cited a lack of fresh food for Claire, physical abuse dating back to when she was a toddler, and gross mishandling of the money she previously earned as an influencer. He went on to accuse her father of wasting the cash on extravagant trips, gifts, and women. With some screenshots dating back to 2013, according to him, that seemed to paint Chris in a pretty worrying light. But some have been quick to question the legitimacy of the campaign, wondering if the evidence presented by Tay's brother is really enough to justify over 17 grand in funds. Even now, over two years since the campaign's launch, we still have yet to see any substantial updates. This was only served to muddy the waters even further, making people question what was real and what was fantasy. Claire and her family again went quiet after this, with the next major update in their lives only serving to confuse people even further. On August 9th, 2023, the following message was posted to Little Tay's Instagram account. This is with a heavy heart that we share the devastating news of our beloved Claire's sudden and tragic passing. We have no words to express the unbearable loss and indescribable pain. This outcome was entirely unexpected and has left us all in shock. Her brother's passing adds an even more unimaginable depth to our grief. During this time of immense sorrow, we kindly ask for privacy as we grieve this overwhelming loss, as the circumstances surrounding Claire and her brother's passing are still under investigation. This left the entire internet completely dumbfounded. Not only was Claire gone, but somehow Jason passed away at the same time. People began speculating wildly about what could have happened to the two siblings, wondering if the cause had been natural or if foul play had been involved. But just as quickly as the news dropped, so too did onlookers begin poking holes in the story. For one, it was discovered that, despite the initial claim of an ongoing investigation, local police actually had no record or knowledge of Claire and Jason's death. The final straw came when the girl's father refused to comment on whether or not the story was true. It seemed like whoever was running the Child Star's account soon realized the jig was up. The announcement was deleted merely 24 hours after it was posted, and a new statement was released to the public. I want to make it clear that my brother and I are safe and alive, but I am completely heartbroken and struggling to even find the right words to say. It's been a very traumatizing 24 hours. My Instagram account was compromised by a third party and used to spread a jarring misinformation and rumors regarding me. This only led to more confusion, as people wondered why someone would go through the trouble of hijacking an account largely forgotten about, and not just that, but also lie about that person's death. There is also the added bafflement since the announcement claimed the rapper's name to not actually be Claire Hope, as was originally assumed, but instead Tay Tian. Of course, not everyone believed the claim that she was hacked. Her former manager, Harry Seng, accused Claire and her team of doing the whole thing as a hoax in order to rekindle interest in her career. It should also be noted that, at the same time as all this drama was going on, a cryptocurrency called Little Tay Coin was released to the public. As of writing, it's currently unclear who exactly was behind this. But given that this exact same loop of disturbing claims being put on her Instagram, a media frenzy occurring, just for them to later blame it on an unnamed hacker, makes many question the legitimacy of the story. 
An out of fashion crypto coin two years too late is just icing on the cake. If this does turn out to be a distasteful revival of the flexing persona, I do question if it would even work nowadays. While an outrageous little girl shtick is novel, now that she is a teenager, she will just be a dime a dozen next to every single clout chasing adolescent on social media. And with that, many are brought to the sad reality of what some are willing to do for money on the world wide web.